has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal and a deluvian evil. Every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. <laughs> It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. All right, so I thought I'd just let that cutscene play out there. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be playing Darkest Dungeon. Um, I really like this game uh, to a pretty large degree. Uh, I'll probably be talking about um, you know whatever comes to mind, game design, um, you know, yeah, game design, game development, or any any kind of um, stuff that I want to play. Because I, I want it to be more of like partially a commentary, but not exactly. I mean, it won't be edited, so it's gonna be kind of hard. So for those of you who watch something like. Um, uh, Matthew Matosis's Demon Souls like uh, commentary video that was all like edited so you didn't have to watch every every level was one just straight shot to the end so it was basically speedrunning Demon Souls a segmented speedrun almost if you will uh, considering he did complete the game in two hours where uh, a normal Demon Souls playthrough would probably take you know, somewhere like ten hours I don't know I mean maybe he's uh, he's good at the game so he's good at speedrunning it. Uh, there's a lot of just stuff that was taken out of there, and it was he was allowed to just kind of talk, and and those two hours were filled with uh, usually very very useful insight and all that kind of stuff. Which this won't be edited; it'll be me just kind of naturally playing it. It'll be kind of like a playthrough, but I'll try to like comment and and, and um, talk about the the the, the game itself, and uh, it'll be more than just like you know me sitting here playing and just saying something dumb to whatever's happening on screen i'll try to like offer not only not only like in in the vein of my epic 7 stuff and my uh fire emblem hero stuff kind of just talking through things that i'm doing uh but also kind of addressing uh design decisions and and things i like about the game and things i kind of don't like about the game um so you know general commentary but like i said since it's going to be a long form playthrough you know we're going to most of the time I'm um, going to be playing will be on screen, so there'll be a lot of like menu stuff and a lot of just kind of like, you know, in between stuff that isn't just straight up, you know, optimal like edited gameplay. Um, it'll be a little longer and, and a little more, um, not as compact basically is the word I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of like getting into it, that, that I, I kind of like that cutscene uh, at the intro really does set the stage pretty well. It, it lets us know exactly what we're in for. Um, I did think it was funny that basically he was living in this house, uh, living, you know, the good life, essentially. Uh, and then he only calls us to reclaim our birthright when there's no more money and <laughs> basically everything's gone to shit. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, that's kind of one of the funniest things about that opening to me was <laughs> it's just like, 
You couldn't have asked me to come and, you know, chill earlier before you started going into the occult, uh, <laughs> doing things you weren't supposed to be doing? We could have, maybe we could have stopped you, I don't know, who knows, right? Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of what that is, hopefully my mic's not too close to my, my mouth there. Um, but yeah, so this is the stuff, I mean, the Butcher Circus is free and we won't be playing it. Um, yeah, I think it's mainly multiplayer, again, I haven't engaged with this because it keeps asking me to, uh, submit to, like data whatever like they want to they want to know about me so, and I keep refusing it so I you know I don't enable this um, but I, I did buy some DLC so you can see here about the color of madness um, districts and flagellant do come with the crimson court which I think is the best value like granted these games aren't this game isn't that expensive things like 20 bucks for the whole game and then maybe just another 20 bucks for the, the whole DLC pack together um, but I think if you wanted to sort of be like, you know, trim the fat as much as possible and then just get kind of Save as much money as possible. Then I think maybe just buying the game on sale uh, And then if you want more on top of that taking the Crimson Court is probably the best one Because you do get not only the Crimson Court for ten dollars and if Darkest Dungeons on sale This DLC might be on sale too um, in which case then there you go. That's more savings um, but this one has the most bang for your buck because you get a whole other area, new bosses, new enemies, and all that stuff. You get uh, the districts upgrade, which is uh, pretty interesting for the the units and, and how they evolve naturally and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, you get the flagellant, which is a whole character uh, by himself in there. Um, which, if you want to compare the, the the quality of it, think about it this way: uh, for ten dollars, you know, not not on sale. For ten dollars, you get a character, which, for those of you who know, the shield breaker is also. Um, uh, its own DLC pack, which the Shield Breaker is five dollars, but a lot of people say the Shield Breaker is very strong. So uh, you're kind of the, the the strength of that character is probably what sells that DLC uh, more than anything. It's it's kind of pay to win, but you know it's not like Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is never easy, right? Just because yeah, that character doesn't become easy. Um, but it, it, if you were to say um, there was a pay to win element, you know a lot of people tend to say that about the sh uh, Shield Breaker. Uh, so keep that in mind is that you're paying for a, a very strong character though to me uh, Like half of the Crimson Court DLC for one character wasn't really worth it. So I didn't really care too much um, But that aside so half of the ten dollars is cut this DLC cost is already in the character And then the other half is like an entire area plus new trinkets and the trinket sets where again if we take a look at the color of madness uh, for five dollars if we're pretending if we're taking flagellant out and we're only looking at Crimson Court the color of madness is five dollars and it only comes with one trinket for every person where this comes with two trinkets and a whole new area where this also comes with a whole new area and then you know there's districts as well so i think in terms of uh money to, to value ratio uh, crimson court is uh, the best one and i got color of madness just for more content and just for the sake of getting it um but yeah the the main thing i just didn't really care about shield breaker too much um adding an extra character to the roster wasn't like that enticing to me so uh, but yeah, so that's what we have enabled. Um, yes. So we're going to do Blood Moon. Um, I'm not sure... I mean, we, we might fail. Uh, yeah, we, we, we might fail on the way there. Um, but this isn't necessarily... I mean, I kind of I just have thoughts about the game and I want to kind of play it. And by the time uh, we do reach the point of failure, if we do end up failing... Um, It'll be all right no matter what, right? I mean, I'll have enjoyed the time going there, getting there anyway, right? So it's not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, so... And Blood Moon's not exactly, like, the most difficult thing in the world. It's not like, you know... Blood Moon is at the point where it's so easy these days to, to a lot of people who are still playing this game that, like, people are kind of come up, coming up with their own, like, self-imposed challenges and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's really not that bad in terms of, like, if you want to know the difference between Blood Moon and Darkest... Uh, darkest Blood Moon has a few things you can't change in terms of the difficulty, because there's a few, like, uh, menu things you can change here for some reason, which is kind of weird. Uh, but here, there's a few things you can change, but mainly the, the the only difference, to me anyway, when I when I think about Blood Moon is just that, or Stygian, for those of you who have only the base game, is that um, you have a time limit and a hero limit, so you only have, like, 12 heroes that can die. Um, for those of you who know uh, uh, an amount about this game, that hero limit the hero death limit gets reduced even more because i think you're supposed to like suffer some deaths as a part of the game itself so it's not actually 12 it's I think it's like 
eight or four or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't beaten this game that many times. And it was a long time ago. So that's something to consider. Uh, but, you know, just just keep in mind the idea is if you're playing Blood Moon, you, you know, any death, any character death is kind of like, you know, a countdown basically. And, and as well as the actual countdown, which is the timer, uh, you only have like, I think it's, it was, I think it's like 83 weeks or something like that. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do Blood Moon without too much haste, and let's name it something uh, appropriate, I think. I think that's about right. Uh, so let's take... So I do. I did install a few mods here, so we're taking... And for those of you who want to see the list of mods, here they are. I know, I mean, it's, it's kind of annoying sometimes when you look at... Um, like some some somebody who's playing this game and he's got a bunch of mods and you're like oh where did he get those well here they are and, and hopefully you can just kind of search them all up um yeah ho hopefully i haven't exactly um used all these mods the first time i played it was uh base vanilla no mods at all um and then i kind of went a little mod crazy and i haven't tested all these and i haven't looked at them all in detail i haven't like done multiple playthroughs with them so hopefully uh nothing too bad comes out i i wanted to stick to the more classy mods not that i have a problem with the with the more risque mods but um for especially for youtube right uh some of the more classy mods are what i wanted to go for uh and and some sort of i guess uh what's the word like thematically similar mods so let's kind of and and i guess i'll walk we'll talk through this and because it's not the whole lot for this first episode we're just going to kind of go through the uh, the first the first little like road and then uh, the first dungeon maybe and we'll, we'll see where we go from there uh, but the antiquarian uh, plain doll I mean a lot of bloodborne and dark Souls stuff really fits well with this game so I kind of that's what I you know I really appreciate those mods um, so that's why that's installed obviously the the abyss walker crusader skin probably the best mod for the crusader I think there was another one that was pretty good but uh, unfortunately you know I, I gotta go with my boy uh, Artorius um, the faster dungeon mod is basically just here for improvement to just gameplay. Um, it just makes certain animations faster without taking away from like the overall pacing of the game. It's not like the game is suddenly just like you're on turbo mode or anything like that. It's just that there's a few things here and there that uh, could do with some hastening, um, especially for like a YouTube series like this where it's like, you know, you want to save time, especially given my tendency to, to go on quite a bit. Uh, and of course I had to take the Helltaker mod, uh, cause I do like <laughs> waifus. Uh, I, I generally, given the fact that, uh, my little, uh, character, for those of you watching my Fire Emblem videos, is Greed. Uh, you know, I think he shares a lot of similarities with, uh, the Helltaker. Um, in terms of visual aesthetics, at least a little bit, but, yeah, anyway. But yeah, so, uh, I like this mod. Um, I just wish there was more to it, cause it doesn't, uh, replace every NPC player, but that's kind of to be expected, cause I don't think, uh, there's enough characters from Helltaker to really do that, but when Helltaker 2 comes out, <laughs> hopefully someone will take care of that. Um, what else? Uh, so Bloodborne, again, Bloodborne skins and the... Uh, Bloodborne skins and the um, Dark Souls skins, like I said, they're, they're very good for, for, for layering into here without really, like... The Bloodborne skins can kind of just be slid in here and you wouldn't even notice, or you wouldn't even know they're from another game, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so the Highwayman is there, um, Caretaker's daughter. Uh, I was testing this, and I still don't know who this replaces, because I have never seen her in the uh, in the thing yet. Uh, but I didn't get that far, I didn't unlock all the buildings, so I don't know. Uh, Porkins, female, whatever. Uh, just because I like uh, having female skins over regular skins, so... This is the only uh, Bounty Hunter skin that was feminine, and looked kind of in lore enough. There is a 2B... Um, bounty hunter skin which I kind of wanted to go with but it looked a little out of place so I was like okay we'll, we'll, we'll tone that down and go with this one uh, the musketeer replacement skin uh, I think is uh, bloodborne again um, bloodborne grave robber uh, I went with slave knight gale but as you see there's also another one uh, another skin for the leper because uh, the leper is kind of just really good for uh, making certain skins but I did like slave knight gale so that's pretty cool uh, the Abbey skin, again, this is uh, an NPC that's not covered by the uh, Helltaker one. Uh, the Graveyard is another example of NPC. Uh, again, so the, these two are, are two uh, female skins. Um, the Vestal's already female, so that's fine, but I wanted a female man-at-arms. Um, the Abomination, again, another female, though. 
This one's not as big a deal considering I don't imagine I'll be using many abominations in this playthrough. Um, just because it's not... It's just... I don't know. It's, 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 it's a good unit, but uh, it's kind of hard to make synergistic and synergy and, and consistency are like the name of the game when it comes to, to Darkest Dungeon, so that's that. Uh, Marceline is just kind of barely on the edge of I probably shouldn't have gone with this skin. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really... <laughs> she, she looked all right, and, and looking at it, I was like, ah, I'll, I'll give her a pass. So that's basically the only... I think that's the only pass. If, if you know, for those of you who want to hold me to that standard um, of... of of lore friendly skins hopefully uh you can i mean aside from the helltaker one you can give me a pass on this unit skin um so you know lord lord blades kieran uh grave robber skin is uh, another good one uh the statue just because i i don't know i just saw it there and i was like let's take that uh, as you can see here we have another vestal skin the uh, dark souls 2 um what's her name the bonfire lady I she has a name i forgot her name was but dark souls 2 is kind of distant in my memory at this point um giant dad of course i had to go with the giant dad skin i mean I, I saw that and immediately i was like it was between slave knight gale and this and i just couldn't make a decision so i had to take both of them um but yeah i think i might end up using giant dad a little more <laughs> just because it's so funny and even like even 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 it being kind of a meme skin it's still very lore friendly i mean he almost looks like he could be in this game like a leper would wear a mask like that to hide his uh I mean, he does wear a mask in the game. In the game, he's wearing a mask and, and all this armor. And this armor and mask don't look too uh, too out of place. So that, that, that was pretty fun. Um, let's see what else. Like I said, the Vestal from Dark Souls 2. Uh, NPC Crier. And then, again, a female flagellant skin. Um, and the Shindal skins. Uh, and, that, and that's about it. That's all the, deal. That's all the, the mods I have uh, for any of you curious. Um, so, yeah, let's just get into it. Hopefully, uh, my computer doesn't crash. Funnily enough, I'm playing this on a uh, second monitor to my laptop. Uh, and if I try recording and playing on the same monitor... On the old road. It winds with a troubling serpent-like this play. the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient hidden cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell. But in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Anyway, my, my, my point being was, um, I was trying to record this on my laptop, which uh, is an Acer Nitro 5. One of the older ones, like really old, I'm talking um, GTX 1060 or even 1050 Ti, I think is what mine is. Uh, with an i5 uh, but anyway the, the point being that trying to record and 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 play it on the same screen uh didn't turn out 100 percent well every single time uh it'll it would crash sometimes and all that um and that, i mean that that kind of stuff with picking out mods and and just getting all this stuff set up was kind of what took me a while i mean i, I had mentioned in the last um one of my last uh, epic 7 or, or fire emblem videos that i wanted to do this um but now it's finally coming after you know lots of preparation and and, and uh, stuff kind of not going the way I wanted it to to begin with. Um, but yeah, for some reason, uh, throwing the game onto an external monitor and then having the recording on on the laptop screen is uh, doing pretty well in terms of stability. I haven't had any problems with it, and it actually runs a lot better than it did uh, previously. I say as it uh, stuttered there, I thought it was going to crash. Right, so here's our two main characters, or not our main characters, I'm the main character, I guess. Uh, but here's our two main, uh, our main guys here, uh, Reynold and Dismas, and I like to make uh, this one, this one. So Reynold, we try to, we generally try to keep Reynold um, through the whole playthrough, because uh, he's our original guy. Of course, we're going to lose him at some at, uh, at a later point, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so here he is. 
uh, we'll, we'll keep him at this skin. From now on, um, going forward, I think with a lot of the Crusaders, I'm just going to take whatever skin they give me. So it's either it's going to be this or, um, you know, just a regular default Crusader skin because they're usually you know, randomized. So we'll just kind of take them as they come and, and, and that. Um, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure. Again, I'm not like the, I don't profess to be like an expert on this game. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure if, I mean, these... As long as I keep playing, I always get these quirks, these negative quirks. He's always going to steal stuff, and he's always going to uh, need to be praying. Um, and I think he always gets this, but whether he has more than this or another one alternate to this that might come out that's rare, I'm not entirely sure, but this is pretty good. Um, yeah, so the, these stats are pretty good for him. Let's kind of come over here and change you. I like my favorite one is... This skin it looks really cool um so so far as i've seen he's got like basically these skills are always the skills he has so that's good uh point blank shot and duelist advance i think uh this one gives him repost which one is it oh one of them does anyway or something does uh known cheat so i know he always has this but i'm not sure he always has this um yeah but it, it, in any case these are good to have um yeah uh, so let's let's get going here. Let's uh, not take too long. I know I have a tendency to wither on. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it, the game isn't drastically different. It's just like they'll walk and slide a little faster, and um, of course the 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 radiant light, the light and the uh, madness still kind of drains accordingly. So it's not uh, <laughs> that's not too bad. I've done that. I, I, like I said, I've recorded this a few times, um, but it doesn't come out the way I wanted to every time. And I've also just kind of been through this as in in sort of preparation. Uh, this this early part a few times, and <laughs> we've never been surprised by this guy, <laughs> and, it's good, and it's hilarious that the first time um, I start recording, this, this happens. Um, so we're very we're very much in danger of dying. Um, <laughs> very early on now. Um, not not to him, mind you, but like. There's been a few times where it's been a close call against the the next coming the upcoming bosses, uh, the upcoming like uh, encounter. Uh, so for those of you who who may not know, um, funnily enough, this apparition here is only here during the Stygian or Blood Moon playthrough. If you play on Darkest, which is the one right below this one, which is what I usually play on. Um, this is always a camp and you can't really fail it so you always find just like a few extra resources um, and there's really no way to to avoid this so you know this isn't a random chance of like oh I might get a curse or something no you're gonna get a curse whenever you talk to her so that, that kind of sucks that it, it's not at least like a little random kind of oh you might have gotten some good but you might have gotten some bad it's just here to, to teach you uh, if it looks kind of scary uh, don't don't mess with it <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like that basically this thing hurts you if you interact with it and basically everything in the game is is really bad and <laughs> not very good for you, but I like that uh, she's telling you to go because she, basically she's the most helpful <laughs> NPC in the entire game. This thug in of course we got surprised. Um, again, this is... this is ha we, Sometimes we get surprised here, but it's not common. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, good thing he mit he dodged that because um, we'll, we'll uh, give him the mark of protection here. We need them to focus on him. Um, good thing he dodged there because that would have put him out of position and would have wasted my turn because I wasted my turn putting him into position. Um, I usually want to kill this guy back here first because this guy is just going to like be annoying. Um, we'll stun him for now. So you want to kind of open with the stunner because now he's going to blank the fire. Good thing we got the dodge. Um, this is one of the things I like about this game is the simplicity of stats. So for those of you who play uh, Epic 7 and stuff like that, I mean, you can kind of compare this a lot to Epic 7 or, you know, just, you know, just a lot of hero RPG games in general, right? Where, like, your health bar is like 7,800 and whatever, right? You've got like 267 attack or something. It's like, no, your damage is only doing 6 to 12, and this will tell you right here in the in the menu when you click it what you have on here. So you've got a 95% chance to hit. 
you're going to lose 15% you know, damage on whatever the, the high end or the bottom end, whichever one you end up rolling. Um, and it's all just kind of very neat and simple. Like, he's got 7 speed. You're not, like, running, you know, 100 and something speed, and then there's a fluctuation of plus 1 or 2 minus speed or whatever and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of, you know, I appreciate, I very much appreciate the simplicity of form this game kind of went for. And it's, you know... You know and that's, I think that's what a lot of people really enjoy about this game. Now, we can't stun him again, because after you stun someone, they gain stun resistance. So you can see down there where it says resistances. He's got 100% stun resistance, so that's not really something we should do. Um, so from now on, we just got to kind of wail on him until he dies. Uh, Dismas is going to usually have pretty good... Um, I say economy. Let's go see what we do. Range shot, 15% um, damage, minus damage bonus. So we could do, and it'll adjust it. See, and it adjusts it according to your damage mod. So if we look at him here, this move is going to do five to ten damage, but this move is also going to do five to ten. This one's going to do three to six, right? Um, and all these values adjust according to that. So I think that I don't know. I think that's really cool. I think it's. Very useful. I think it's annoying uh, when certain that certain games don't have it, considering um, how much they want to charge out of you for for their games, especially Epic Seven. Basically, do the minimum and and expect you to like wail on their units. Uh, that's something for another day, so we'll, we'll not uh, complain too much about that. So he's back at fifty percent. Uh, I guess we could try to stun him again. Uh, when it, it's not too bad because if we miss the if we miss the stun, um, it's still damage and. It's not like it'll mean anything whether we kill him sooner or later anyway, um, because he'll just be, leave a corpse and he'll be blocking him anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Now, as long as he's doing whip attacks, it's fine. I just don't want him to do the point blank shot, because if, if he hits us with it, um, he's going to move us back and uh, it's going to make the rest of this fight kind of annoying. Even though they're, I mean, they're going to die regardless, <laughs> as long as Dismas doesn't uh, get killed. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what prot does. Um, theoretically, it reduces damage taken by 20%. You know, I mean, that's kind of what prot does. And and Darkest Dungeon is kind of like straightforward enough to be for me to believe that. But you know, other games have kind of conditioned me that it's like you get 20% prot, but I don't know what that means. It, there's so many different multipliers and calculations that it gets kind of ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's just let's just kill this guy. Ooh, he dodged. That's not good. Uh, so he's dead, and we're gonna get a crit on him. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of just what I was going for, really. Uh, let's just... Yeah, we'll just kill him. He should be dead now, yeah. Oh, we actually got quite a bit. We didn't get... So we got... A bandage. Yeah, we got this, I guess. I mean, I think these are just supposed to be sold, and then, um... Sorry, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, like, the best at this game. Um, torches. It's weird that it gives us a torch because you can't bring it into the next dungeon or anything, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, let's just take all. Uh, so let's come over here. So, funnily enough, you can just go back to the hamlet, um, but you want to put press continue traveling so you can get this chest, which I didn't know at the beginning. So, um, just a, a small thing. Now, this chest is almost always going to be booby trapped. Uh, but it, it's worth checking anyway, just for the sake of it. Uh, let's just heal him with one of these, I guess. <laughs> for the sake of doing that. Um, but this is always going to be booby trap watch, so let's kind of take a look and see what's in here. Yeah, see? Um, and all we got, I mean, we got blight, so there you go. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's it. That's all we have to do is, is I'll take that out. Uh, quest rewards, five collected gold. So, okay, so this basically just turned into to gold, right? So, I don't know... Yeah. Found gold coins, blah, blah. Oh, we didn't get any heirlooms. That's kind of sad. Okay, so I don't always, like like I said, I've done this starting run a few times already, and I don't always get them both to, to unlock a uh, quirk. So it's kind of interesting that they both uh, got it now. So let's hopefully get something good. Okay, so bleed resistance, that's, that's pretty good, considering bleed is like 90% of this game's uh, dots. Uh, well, for you, bleed is basically most of them, unless you get like a plague doctor. Uh, but for them, they, they tend to have a lot. Especially, well, in the Crimson Court, he'd be pretty good because there's a lot of bleeding in there, I'm assuming. I haven't played it yet, so. Um, plus 10% stress heal received, which is pretty good because I do intend to run a Jester 
uh, in, a, in a certain a few comps, so you know, it's always good. And I think he stress heals himself, or one of them does. Uh, but we got two good quirks there, which is pretty good because those have been negative quirks sometimes. Um, yeah, so that's good to that's good to know. Welcome home, uh, such as yep. it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. I have never searched up who the voice actor for um, this narrator is, or your your ancestor, whatever you want to call him. Um, but he does a really good job. I think, uh, like, on your first playthrough, on your second playthroughs and other playthroughs, you don't really care anymore, and you're probably just playing it on mute while you're listening to something else, like, you know, some YouTube song or something. Um, but I think he did a really good job, and, and I think he's, like, some of the best, like, some of the most charm you get on the first playthrough is... It's just hearing him talking there, and from a, like a, a 15 hour from you know the first time I played through 15 hours, I didn't get sick of hearing the voice, and like I haven't played since since a long time ago, um, and I, you know even now it's again it's it's still just as interesting to hear him. Uh, so there's these soldiers and outlaws. The flagellist isn't here, which is kind of interesting, uh, and you're always gonna get these two, which is something to consider. I don't know if. Uh, they always have these names. I can't remember for the life of me. I should have checked that last time. Um, and I don't have a skin for this guy, which is kind of annoying because I don't think there is a skin for this guy. Uh, so this is going to be our Plague Doctor. So let's go with the, um, the Shindol skin here. So you're gonna he's going to lose crits on, on range, which already kind of sucks because that's basically all you want to use him for. Um, he loses crit when he's below 50. So he gets less stress, or she gets less stress, and she gets more healing from camping. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I mean, it's not like there's anything we can do about it. We kind of just need her. Uh, but I guess we got pretty good rolls on her. Than the blood um, she's going to be in third position just so she can use this, but theoretically... Oh, we got field medicine. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. No, that's fine. Yeah, no, okay, never mind. That's fine. That's fine. Um... I was worried. I actually usually kind of like this one better, but field medicine is fine because she's got one of the only uh, blight cures anyway. So I guess we're 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 pretty solid there. Blight and bleed is no joke. Um, they do tend to tick on for quite a bit. So the fact that you can just use this whenever is good. Um, yeah, I think we got, we probably got the best set. I was worried because I thought this was this one and not not this one. It's th this move isn't necessarily the like the greatest move but it's pretty good considering it does cleave and it, it inflicts blight um though like it says here you get 90 percent damage reduction so you're not going to hit for anything it's just the bleed cleaves uh usually this is what i i kind of like the chance of a two to, uh two unit stun is pretty uh ridiculous uh but yeah so this this is this is fine as well um but you know it, like i said Usually you get this, and if you get this, you're kind of double stacking on bleed, so it's at, for on on stun. So it's it's pretty beneficial that we got this one instead. So we can um, we can AOE with this, we can cleave with this, and then we can uh, if we need to stun anybody, we can stun them with this. So there we go, and then we can shuffle, which uh, enemies aren't really that affected by shuffle. Like a shuffle on your party is pretty detrimental. Like it could cost you a run at the wrong time, or if you can't reposition people fast enough. Um, but to the enemy, it doesn't really do anything. So that's kind of funny that like this skill has that. Um, it's it's kind of like a 50-50. It's like, I don't know why they gave your units the skill to move them. Um, if it doesn't really do anything. Um, and the thing is, there's not that many skills that have enemy shuffling on them. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. The only thing shuffling is worth doing for is to, like, early on right now. So if I bring, like, um, you know, a unit from the back row to the front row, it means Reynald can hit him. Uh, and probably do more damage because if they're in the back row, they're usually squishier, so you can just you know kind of wail on them until they die. And that's basically all movement shuffling does for you. It doesn't really disrupt their plans. Uh, so I guess with her, uh, I am not planning on critting on anything, which is fine because this is just to inflict bleed, this is just to inflict blight, this is healing, and this is just the stun, right? So the fact that she doesn't have any crit is is all right. So I'll take that. Um, and less stress is always good uh, money wise in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, we got this mace bash on her, which really sucks. Uh, but <laughs> apparently, we got divine comfort on a base vestal. 
Wow, that's kind of weird. I mean, this isn't like the most broken thing ever, but it's certainly a strong ability to have so early on. Usually you gotta unlock this. I didn't know you could just get this like this. So basically she's gonna sit in the back row and, uh, you know, torch farm for one, heal for other, for another, and that's basically it. Everyone else is probably gonna have to be uh, taking care of the damage over her, but basically we can't die now. <laughs> uh, I say that and then we end up dead later. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see here. Uh, these upgrades, I'm not, again, I'm not like a professional at this game, so I, I won't try to like say anything too, too stupid, but, um, generally I think you'd want this and I think this would be pretty good for the, the sake of, um, the sake of getting more variety because having three units come in or just having more units come in means you can pick what you want better rather than just kind of taking what they give you because it's like, oh, I need a unit, so here, I'll just take this. Um, and of course, you kind of, I think you'll, you'll probably need this as, as the game goes on, sort of a necessary upgrade. Um, I know some people, I've, I've heard some people say this isn't very good, but I, I do think it saves a lot of time um, not having to upgrade units, right? Because if, if, if they all come in as level one constantly, it's like super irritating to have to like grind them up again. Um, but yeah, so we can't go there. Now, there's a lot of stuff locked at the beginning here. Uh, so here she is, uh, and we don't have a uh, skin the for the jeweler. Uh, I don't know how much of this stuff I really care about. Um, I'll, I mean, we'll probably get it. If, if it comes nat naturally enough, we'll probably get it, but I'm not going to like go out of my way to get too much of this stuff, just because I think the Crimson Court, usually the Crimson Court um, set bonus sets, you know, are usually better than these at the end of the day anyway, so there's that. Um, actually, in my comp in my recent, in my, my playthrough where I went the furthest, um, I actually didn't upgrade any of these. Well, I didn't upgrade this one. Yeah, I didn't upgrade this one because um, buying trinkets was never really, like, that important. Um, and I only had like a few upgrades into this one just because it's like, oh, if it's there, I'll take it. But if not, it's no no big deal. Um, but yeah, you know. So I think uh, out of all of them, I'm probably going to spend the less, the least amount of like resources upgrading this Nomad Wagon. Um, and that's just kind of what I wanted to come over here for was just to say I'm probably not going to be using this, this wagon too much. Um, I wonder if this I th theoretically this should reduce the cost of these too, right? But yeah, it's kind of weird because this upgrade doesn't do anything because they're all here already. I think I'm not sure uh, how I feel about the fact that he just has all of them here. Um, I think it would have been nicer if it was just kind of like here where it's like you get a few of them and he'll just cycle through them. But I don't know. I mean, I guess it's better for consistency. You know, if you need a if you need if you're doing an uh, a speed run or something, um, and you're that's kind of weird. If you're doing like a speed run or something and you're like, oh, I need this particular trinket, you just come here and get it. And then, you know, as soon as you get it, you know, you're on your way rather than having to wait for it. Uh, so we have 16 deaths. We get four more, I think, from uh, Crimson Court. Uh, but like I said, some of these we're going to lose just to the fact that uh, we have to lose some in the, in the final boss or in arena time, or something like that. You will know the tragic extent uh, and then here's uh, their saber. Uh, so yeah, that's it for for this first episode. Um, I wanted to get more done, but I've already kind of rambled on quite a bit. Um, so I think, I mean, I'm probably going to continue now um, and, and play the next dungeon. And, uh, you know, we'll see that in, in the next episode. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, any, you know, for anybody who, who likes Darkest Dungeon or, or just <laughs> likes to watch me do stuff, watch <laughs> likes to watch me, like, learn to play the, a game because I'm not, like... The best at this game not that i'm the best at fire emblem or or or, or epic 7 but i do consider myself to be sort of in a in a decently competitive bracket let's say um at least i was but uh, <laughs> a few things have changed recently um but yeah so for those of you who want to see me kind of like my process to learning and my process to um optimizing and 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 getting better at a game where i'm not necessarily like the most experienced with i mean you know this is a great this will hopefully be a good insight to to see how I treat things and see how I uh, I grow and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, hopefully uh, you guys, those of you who like watching Darkest Dungeon will, in, uh, will enjoy the series. Um, oops, I gotta make sure not to do that. Okay, yep. <laughs>